What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. Thank you for watching. We're having a lot of fun with this. Christina and I finally got to collaborate on a little something here for our friend Rusty. She just opened up her new shop called Kintsugi Tattoo and we made her a tattoo stand. Christina's actually really wicked at doing leather and upholstery and that type of textile stuff. And uh, I handled the metalwork on it. Just quick little preview. Ah, don't look, don't look. I don't wanna spoil it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So thanks everybody for watching. If you haven't already, please like this video, click subscribe, hit notifications. That's the type of stuff that helps us out and helps us get out to more people so that we can teach and do our thing and live this crazy life. So thanks a lot, everybody. Let's get into it. All right, so I'm working on this little ball joint setup for the uh, tattoo stand. Here is my idea. I've got this little chrome ball. It's not actually chrome, this is polished stainless. I found them on Amazon. I think I bought a pair for 10 bucks or something. It's inch and a half, perfect. I've got my DOM tube. This DOM tube is um, inch and three quarter, OD, inch and a half, ID. So I just cleaned it up a little bit. This drops right inside of it. Nice, lots of play. So my thoughts were to make this ball joint, I uh, machined a little bit off of this. So that little ring, I put a little bevel on it so that this ball seats in it very nicely. Outside of this ball is inch and a half. Outside of this ring is inch and a half. They fit right inside there. And with this flush, the actual armrest is gonna be on a half inch piece of stainless coming out of this ball. So. Essentially, the armrest should be able to tilt side to side, front and back with this ball. Now, what I'm gonna do to lock this ball, I wanna make it really easy. Tattoo artists are holding lots of stuff. They, they need to be able to do it with one hand. So on the other side of this, what I'm gonna do is machine uh, a little plug in here that has a threaded hole. I might weld a nut, I'm not sure yet. I've got a stainless nut here, I could weld that in there. This stainless bolt is gonna tighten against that ball to lock it in place. I'll put a little T handle on there so it's really easy. You just put the armrest where you want it, tighten the handle, done. My only concern, and here's a little trick I picked up from another machinist, is that you know stainless on stainless or steel on stainless, it's gonna mark it up a little bit and, uh, and you're never gonna see it because it's gonna be stuck inside there. Once we weld it up, it's, it's sealed. Nothing's, nothing's take apartable after that. <laughs> so uh, what I'm gonna do and this is a brilliant idea. I'm gonna TIG weld some silica bronze, which will stick to stainless, no problem, right on the end of this. And what that's gonna do is allow a slightly softer metal to be on the contact point of the bolt against here. Now, because that metal is soft, it's going to press against there and it's not gonna mark that up. The dab of silica bronze filler rod that I weld to the end of this is going to actually maybe barely squish a little bit, give a nicer, wider contact patch, if you will. The more times it keeps getting tightened on there, it's, it's gonna work sweet. No one will ever see it or know that it's there, but I'll know that it's not marking this up because stainless is one of those metals that it can gall fairly easily. And what galling means is that if there's a little bit too much friction, it can deteriorate a little bit. And then like, if you've ever heard somebody talk about galling threads, usually it's threading dissimilar metals or cross-threading metals, but uh, with stainless, it can happen really easily. So any threads that we have that are stainless, we always put on never seize. Actually, this bolt's been used before. There's some never seize on there so that it doesn't gall. So that's something to look into. Copper anti-seize uh, is what we like to use. So this stainless ball will stay stainless and uh, shiny. That's my idea for the ball joint. Let's uh, see if we can't get this figured out.
All right, so here it is. That's our little piece that we just machined with the thread. It's gonna sit in the bottom there. We're gonna weld around here. We're gonna weld around there. Obviously, like I said, I'm gonna put the silica bronze weld on the top of that bolt for the clamping surface. But you can see it's moving everything up and down, which means it's gonna clamp that nice. Hopefully we get quite a few degrees of movement out of that ball joint. I'm going to uh, weld a stainless steel rod onto the end that is going to mount to our actual pad. All right, well, I guess I learned something about this uh, polished stainless ball. It looks like a ball bearing. It is a ball bearing. It is super hard. My bits won't touch it. I can't drill into it. That's not a big deal though. The reason I wanted to drill into it is so that number one, for strength, it's kind of over engineered. I don't think it really needs to be drilled into and plugged in there, but to make sure that I keep this thing center when I weld this half inch stainless rod onto the uh, ball bearing, I'm going to chalk it in a lathe. I'm going to make this rod my drill bit and I'm going to put the ball bearing in its little ball joint housing right in the chuck of the lathe and uh, weld it up. All right, well that worked out pretty good. Ended up welding that with uh, just a bit of silica bronze. We've got uh, a little ball joint happening. The next step for me, I think, is I'm going to uh, make a cool little twister nut for this side, just using a stainless steel cap screw. I'm probably just gonna lathe down the knurl on that screw. I don't know if it's gonna actually focus on that so you can see the knurl, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use another piece of that half inch stainless. I'm gonna make basically just a giant wing nut. That's all it's gonna be. It'll probably give it a little bit of a bend. So it's kind of like a wing nut like that. That's what I'm gonna do next. And then I'm gonna cope a piece of tubing. This is the tube I'm gonna use. It's gonna adjust up and down through another piece of tube. This is just one inch 065 wall stainless tubing. That's what's gonna be our pole that goes up and down. And it's going to cope. I'm gonna cope it on the top with uh, just a hole saw tube notcher. That's what I've got set up here. This little tube notcher is inch and three quarter. This is inch and three quarter. I'm going to do a 45 degree so that this ball joint sits on a 45 degree angle and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, well I kind of hit a bit of a snag and uh, it's my own dang fault for not checking with the caliper. 
but normally when I use DOM tubing at which I would like something to slide into, the DOM tubing usually has a little bit of clearance. So when you order DOM, if you don't know what DOM is, it's uh, drawn over mandrel. It means it's a seamless tube. Basically it's the same as regular tubing, except that they, they actually like draw it over a mandrel piece and they um, smooth that seam out that you would normally see on the inside of pipe or tube. So DOM tubing, the way you order it is by the outside diameter and then the wall thickness. The DOM tubing that I'm using is inch and a quarter, 120 wall. 120 wall is common. It's a little less than an eighth by five thousandths of an inch. So there's um, a high chance that, like if you were to take a one inch shaft, you'd, it'd slip right in there, no problem. But I've never actually used this stainless, this is polished stainless tube. This is 065, sorry, one inch 065 tubing. You can see right in there, it's a pretty thin wall, but it's got that nice finish on it. And since this is gonna slip in and out to adjust height on this tattoo stand, I wanted it to be stainless because obviously if it was steel, it would rust. And if it was painted, it would scratch. So I was hoping, and I, it didn't even cross my mind that it wasn't gonna fit but I was hoping that the stainless tube would just slip right into the DOM, just like any other steel tube would slip right into the DOM. Not the case. I tried and uh, we have interference. So I checked it with a caliper. I'll just show you what I'm talking about here. If I put a caliper on this tube, I've got like, you know, uh, one inch and seven thou. If I go over to my DOM tube, which apparently I just left it wherever I was last, and Ah, there it is, sitting in there. Sitting in here. If I check the inside of this, do, 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 one inch and five thou. So that means, that means two thou interference. And even if it was zero thou interference, that's still not enough. You need to have a little bit of uh, play in there for something to be able to easily slip up and down. You don't want to be forcing it. So I'm kind of at a dilemma here. What do I do? Do I have this DOM piece of tube put onto a lathe and have somebody machine out like three thou or five thou or 10 thou or whatever I decide. I'd rather not. Number one, it's gonna cost more money. Number two, is it super necessary? Can we figure something out? I think we can. I don't know if you've ever cut a tube in half before, not in half, but if you slice a tube, sometimes they pop, they go and they pop out a little bit. And uh, this is kind of like an artsy fartsy tattoo stand, um, armrest, armrest tattoo stand for a uh, artsy fartsy tattoo artist. And um, it doesn't have to be a perfect tube. So I'm gonna cut it and see if it pops a little bit, allows it to slide a little bit. And then I might just like do some decorative welding, maybe not full weld, but just like tack in a bunch of spots or something, make it look kind of neat. See how that looks. If that works, then I'm solved. I have to split the tube anyway because I wanna make a clamp that pinches the cut in the tube so that you can adjust the height and pinch it. So I'm just gonna do a bolt that uh, squeezes the um, slit in the tube together to clamp onto that stainless tube that's going up and down. That's the plan anyway. I'm just gonna uh, figure my way out of this one. <laughs> Okay, so I split the tube and success a little bit. It's still a bit tight. Like I want it to easily slide in and out without having to really pull on it. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe stick a screwdriver in there. Give her just a, one of those. Now we're good. So I'm gonna stick the screwdriver in, give it a love tap, give it a love tack, and then do that all the way along. We use that silica bronze stuff, and it should be great. Structurally, it doesn't need this, like, it, structurally, it doesn't need it. It doesn't need to be a giant tube. This is like roll cage stuff, so I'm not worried about having a big slot in it, especially because I'm gonna put a bolt here that clamps it, that tightens it against that. We'll weld it up. We're gonna weld it up. All right, Operation Split and Fit is a success.
success. We've got ample clearance to slide up and down, in and out, adjust for height. I think we're solved. So next up, I'm gonna clean this tube up a little bit, square it up on our base here. This is a, a base I cut out of half inch, half inch mild steel plate on the, uh, on the CNC. It was a design that Rusty, the tattoo artist this is for, she, uh, she sent me, said I like this design, so there it is. I'm just gonna weld this directly onto there. Stick this right on there. And uh, we still gotta make our little adjuster here and our top piece for the armrest, but just about got her beat. Okay, this is the bend I was talking about that's key. That's why we've got this on an angle. If I give this a bend to straight, so our pad, I just cut on the CNC. This is gonna be our, our armrest pad. So I'm gonna bend this straight, then this pad will have this kind of movement. But if we flip the pad around, this bend will bend further down and we'll have even more movement. That's the plan anyway. All right, here's the ball joint design. Woo! You want it there, 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 there. You know, where, where do you want it? Here, in there, in there. You can tighten it anywhere. <laughs> Hopefully, it works exactly as good or better than the one that she had before.
All right, so tell us what you're doing. This is so dumb. Hey everybody, I'm Carl's wife, Christina, AKA Lady Japans. I'm so bad at this. I've always loved sewing and creating things. Um, I love metal flake vinyl, she loves Mexican blanket. So we decided to go with this. So now here's my portion of the video. We're gonna get ready to upholster it to the pad. So I have here my foam and I have some batting. I'm just gonna use some spray adhesive glue just to kind of fluff it up and smooth out the rough foam because we did a really swell job of cutting it out. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully it'll make it look nice and puffy, uh, which is what we want. I'm just gonna make the top of the pad a little bit puffier than the rest of it because I want it to kind of bulge out at the top. Let's see here, what's six to eight inches away? Thought so? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Okay, now we're just gonna wait for it to dry and get tacky and then we will stick it together. Just gonna cut a strip to glue to the outside edge. Do I look really red and sweaty? Not at all. You actually look like you have perfect skin. <laughs> no. Hopefully this microphone can pick up my mumbling. <laughs> My scissors aren't so great anymore. <laughs> Cutting all of Sisu's hair out. <laughs> Whose fault is that? Your fault. Oh no. <laughs> she tacky. Yeah. So that feels tacky enough. I'm just gonna give it a trim. Okay. I'll wait for that one to dry. I'm hoping. Looks like a snowy pillow. There we go. Nice job. Are you sure that's a tattoo stand or a mini bike seat? <laughs> It'd look dope on a mini bike. So now we're going to attach the wood base that we're going to staple all of our fabric to once we wrap it around the base there. That will screw on into the wood afterwards. All right. I'm afraid for this part. <laughs> this means I have to get it centered. At least it's not like my leather contact cement where once I lay it down, it's... That's it, there's no adjustments. That's all she wrote. Fuck. That looks straight enough to you. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, almost as beautiful Does as it though? I'm making it, yeah. Oh, no, one side's maybe a little bit more. Okay. All right, <laughs> now the scary part. <laughs> Now, we're gonna wrap this over top. Yeah! It's gonna kinda pull and tuck it around. Get it nice and tight. If it's bad, then we might have to undo it.
the good shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's they so awesome. The ball joint. Oh my gosh. That's Does that have enough, like, that's movement? So oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Holy oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Stoked you like it. <laughs> And yeah, like look at like that color is like identical. It pretty much is, right? It's so sick. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Guys. You're welcome. We totally forgot to do the wrap-up video for the tattoo stand before our little trip here. We're on uh, Vancouver Island for our seventh wedding anniversary. Yeah. Christina, finally, here she is. Here she is, everybody's oh, been asking her. What are you doing? I don't know, I'm f***ing with your hat. Jesus. <laughs> I hope you guys love that tattoo stand. I know I had a blast making that. Figuring out the ball joint thing was kind of a bit of a brain scratcher for me. I know it's not car related so much, but uh, it's definitely fabrication related. I think the pad turned out killer, like she killed it. She not only edits like a pro, Thank but you. she does her thing with the textiles, you know? <laughs> Um, yeah, so thanks everybody for watching. We're editing on the road and uh, keeping pumping out these videos. I'm yeah. editing. She's editing. On vacation. I'm answering comments. <laughs> That's my job. But uh, yeah, everybody, thank you so much for watching and uh, supporting Make It Custom. We love you guys. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. We've got a couple more videos to edit while we're out here. Before we actually cut this thing off, I just want to give a big shout out to uh, Tony at Fitzy's Fabrications. He's in Nova Scotia, I believe. I love his videos. He he just kills it. He tells everybody how to do all kinds of sheet metal repair, and uh, you should definitely check him out. Fitzy's Fabrications. Wait, kinda... His name is Tony. His name is Tony. But he's not Fitzy. Tony. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks a lot. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye bye.